Right, this next section, 3.13, looks at copying data to a CDR and a CDRW. Very, very handy feature for those of you that have CDR drives and CDRW drives. Obviously, this particular functionality was not available in previous work versions of Windows um, prior to XP, unless, of course, you had a third-party piece of software, such as Roxio Easy CD Creator or one of the other ones. Nero is another popular one in, in use uh, nowadays. But Windows XP doesn't need any of that stuff. It can copy directly to CDs, so, uh, CDRs and CDRWs. Obviously, they have to be specifically those types of media. You can't just copy to a CD-ROM, for example. But let me show you how this works. I've actually got another computer underneath my feet here, which is a completely different machine. But it's got XP on it in the same format and the same layout as everything we've got. The only difference is, is it's actually got inside the computer. It's got a, a CDRW drive. Let me show you. So I switch over to this computer here. If I go to the start and then my computer on this computer, you'll see that I have inside here a, um, a CD drive, which is actually a CDRW drive. If I double click on this, I've actually got in here a blank CDRW disk. Let me just show you it quickly. So here it is. It's one of these disks that you can buy in most PC shops. Obviously, it just enables you to actually write to a CDs. Obviously, we've got CDR, we've got CDRW. What's the difference between these two different types of media? Andy? CDRs allow you to write to them just once. Good. CDRWs allow you to rewrite. Good. CDRs allow you to write just once, and CDRWs allow you to rewrite. Now, I have no doubt that a lot of you have got some experience about rewriting and so on. What's the sort of common values you can actually rewrite to these things? How many times can you rewrite to some of these disks? Some of you with some experience of writing disks. They say up to a thousand times. Very, very uh, optimistic, I think, when we say a thousand times. There's a couple of rules which say it's sort of around about 64 times. That tends to be a common uh, value stated in, in documentation, but reality wise, you're going to get about 20, uh, 20 copies onto the same disk. So, you, what, what I'm getting at is you can write to a disk, delete it, write to a disk, delete it, write up to 20 times. So, obviously, every time it's having to reset the disk surface. And of course, that's going to have a, a, a degradating effect on the actual disk itself. But anyway, I've got the CD. I've popped it into the drive. This window immediately pops up on screen saying, what do I want to do? Do I want to open a writable CD folder or take no action? Well, OK, I'll open a writable CD folder. But that doesn't actually do anything different than just browsing to it manually using the browser. So it doesn't really matter how you get there. It does the same thing. So to be honest, I'm just going to click cancel to that one because we already had this open anyway. This is a writable CD folder. The key thing is, notice what we've got here write these files to CD. This is the magic button, so to speak, because this button is what it actually does. It tells it to write to the CD. So I'm just going to pick a couple of files. So let's just go to my, um, I don't know, my D drive, take a look under WinXP and just find a couple of files to copy over. Let's go for these three picture files here. So this is just representing some data. Obviously I'm not going to copy too much. don't want it to take too long. Right click on these three files and copy them. And then if I go back to my CDRW drive, which is sitting right here, I can then paste them in there. And you'll notice it pastes them, but I don't know if you can see this. If I make the icon a bit bigger, you can see that we've got this little arrow, this down arrow, which is basically saying to, that it isn't currently on the disk. It's just ready to copy. One particular feature you need to be wary of when you're copying to CDs, you've got to have enough space on your disk drive to buffer the information. Because what it does, it creates a copy of it on your disk drive, your hard disk drive, and then when you click on this magic button, write these files to CD, it copies them directly to the actual disk itself. And you can see here you've got this delete temporary files, and that's those temporary files that have been buffered on your C drive ready to copy over. So once we're ready, we can just click on write these files to CD. Brings up the little wizard. Click on next. And off it goes. It takes a little while. Obviously the CD's got to start spinning and writing all the information and so on. It'll take about 40 seconds or so. In the meantime, Andy, you got a question? Yeah. Could this be an instance where a screensaver might be a bad idea? Very much so, If it yeah. pops up now, could it like interfere yeah. with this process? Could, it could do. I wouldn't say, and I wouldn't necessarily say it would do, but it could do. Yeah, because the screensaver is going to get certain things to happen to the computer. So when you're writing things, and when you're doing anything of this sort of nature, copying files or folders, you, want, you don't want it being disturbed. To be honest with you, though, it probably would be okay. So you can see here it's now writing off to the CD. And then, obviously, when the progress bar is all the way to the end, we're going to be completed the actual process. Sorry, David, just a question. Yes, Chris, go for it. Um, you've said that we can use XP to write to CDs. Can we also format the CDs with XP? 
Uh, you, can, you can wipe them. them. Yeah, you can't really format them in the sense that you're perhaps thinking of. Remember, with the CD, you actually use CDFS. You're not using FAT12 or FAT16 or FAT32 or any of those. You're using a special type of file system called CDFS. So yeah, you can wipe this. I'll show you how to do that in a second, because I'm actually going to wipe this disk again and recopy it to show you how it works. Okay. Don't Michael? Does it make a difference if it's a CDR or a CDRW as to whether you can wipe it or not? Of course, yeah. CDR, you can't wipe. Yeah, because CDRs can only be written to once. So once you've written to them, you've burnt to the disk surface, and that's it. You can't then wipe the data. It's permanently on there. Unless you take out a big hammer and smash it into lots of pieces, then it's pretty much damaged. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot, you got a question? Yeah, in terms of buffering, yeah. um, I the other day tried to back up all the JPEGs on my hard drive to a right. CD, and yeah. um, it just hung the, the system. Where on the hard drive um, a file is buffered to, and is it a space like a swap file that you can change the size of? It's a good question. To be honest with you, it's one I don't know the answer to. They're buffered somewhere on the actual hard drive itself. And obviously what you've got to make sure, it's normally on the same partition that your operating system is installed on. So it'll be on your D drive, and there's somewhere in there. But the important thing is, is you make sure you've got enough space on your D drive to effectively have another copy of them. You with me? So say if you're copying all your JPEGs from your D drive to your CD, then you've got to make sure you have enough space again to put all of those JPEGs sure. before you put it on. That's just to make sure you're completely covered by the buffering sure. process. Sure, okay. okay. But yeah, you, I mean, this, the whole process of it hanging is a very popular issue. The whole issue of the, the, of the system hanging. Because obviously what you're getting your system to do is a whole load of work. Very common for it to hang. Yes, Andy, sorry, you got a question? Just one more question. Yeah. If you were doing something that was going to take a long time to copy, yeah. um, and you had your, because I mentioned screensavers before, but your power saving was yeah. due to cut off within the time it was going to take for that to finish. Would that stop the power saving from happening, or would the power saving try to shut it down anyway? It depends what you define as power saving, because the, very, the various elements of power saving, like monitor, and there's various elements like hard disk. So in terms of monitor, then it's a, a, the monitor question is a unique question on its own. So what I'm getting at is the monitor will say, have I been used in 20 minutes? No. OK, turn off. In other words, nobody's moved the mouse, nobody's pressed a key on the keyboard, so I'm assuming no one's sitting there. So after 20 minutes, it'll turn off. But the hard disk will ask itself the same question. So the hard disk is sitting there, and it'll say, have I been using the last 20 minutes? Sure, I'm buffering all this information to this CD. So I'm really busy. So yeah, in that case, the hard drive would keep working, the monitor probably wouldn't. The monitor would turn off. Chris? David, just in regards to um, buffering, you know when it buffers the information to the hard drive? Yeah. Uh, it probably does automatically clear it after it's used it, after it's copied it. It does indeed, yeah. yeah. At yeah. what point does it do that, just in regards to maybe you want to reuse that afterwards or something? Th at this point, right here. This is actually the question it's asking you right now. If we take a look at this screen, what it's saying is, do you want to create another CD using the same files? So effectively, if we reword that question, it's saying, I've got all these files buffered, do you want to put them on another CD or can I now get rid of them? You see what I'm saying? So if we say, no, no, we've finished, get rid of them, then it'll just say, okay, cool, and it'll dump them all. However, if we tick this box saying, yes, I want to write these files to another CD, it'll hold on to them, because obviously you want to write them to another CD. Okay. Cool. Good question.